<laughs> Blade, what the yeah, fuck are you doing? It's not like the fry or like So it's been a while and I kind of do feel like a guy that's ghosted you and I'm like grossing myself out with that but I thought maybe I'd update you on some things that I've read recently. I don't think I've checked in here since maybe like August? Maybe September? So it's definitely been a while. Um, I'm not going to go through every book that I've read because we'd be here for a long time and neither of us wants that, but I will tell you the book that I'm reading just now, the last fiction I read, the last non-fiction I read, and maybe the audiobook I just finished. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so the book that I'm reading just now is The Apprenticeship or The Book of Pleasures by Clarice Lispector, and this is my first Lispector and it is rocking my world, blowing my mind. I don't think I've ever read anything like her writing. I, like, I don't think I have. Um, Nathan from Nathan's Nook also read this recently and so was sending me some good voice notes and articulated my feelings perfectly on it. But if I was to sum up how I'm feeling about it right now, I have to say that I'm having to read this book in little sips. I can't gulp it down or devour it because it's not that the text is really dense, but it's just so full. Like the writing feels really filled with a lot and I need time to sit with it and digest it before I can, you know, go back for another little sip. Um, it does feel like I'm unraveling a little bit whilst reading it, it feels a little bit existential, but in a really beautiful way, not in a bad way. Yeah, I'll talk to you more about that book when I've finished it because I'm in the midst of it just now and it's quite an experience. Um, the book that I read before that was The Last Supper, A Summer in Italy by Rachel Cusk and we read that for my book club and it was really great. A collection of essays, it's Cusk, um, I think this is maybe my first non-fiction by her and it reads very similar to her fiction. It has all her great word choice and use of language, it reads so well, um, has all the little observational details. Oh, see ya. Um, has all the little observational details that really like drop you into a scene and it was like a really good discussion book for book club as well there was a lot to talk about in terms of just cusk writing and how it compares to her fiction about travel about art about class um 
yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it, which for an essay collection, usually it would be like, this essay's a hit, this one's a bit of a miss, I hated this one, this one was alright, oh, love this one. But with The Last Supper, I loved every single essay. Yeah, if you haven't read any Cusk but want to dip your toes in and you're a fan of non-fiction, this might be a good place for you to start because you get a lot of travel writing, some art history and just a lot of um, operating as part of a family unit when you're the wife and mother and you have a career and you're trying to balance children and your life. And yeah, her perspective on that definitely fed into the discussions we were having in book club to do with class because this essay collection is born out of Cusk taking herself, her husband and their two daughters to Italy for three months. Now, it is over the summer, but she pulls her kids out of school to go and throughout the book, it doesn't really tell you why they're doing it and so that was kind of you know niggling at me the entire time like I was like this is great like there's so much gorgeous writing um really beautiful writing about painting and the scenery and Italy and the people that they're meeting um but I don't understand why they're here or why they're doing this and then towards the end it's kind of touched on but it just made me feel like maybe Rachel Cuss could have been a bit more self-aware um, in regards to her privilege of being able to just drop everything and move to Italy for three months because, you know, that is a massive privilege to be able to pull four people out of their life and just go do that. Um, but it did serve us some gorgeous writing, so, you know, I'm glad she did it. Um, yeah, there's a couple of essays, even though I enjoyed them all, there's a couple that definitely stood out to me. So one of them was... The Veiled Lady, and in that essay, she's predominantly speaking about the painters Cimabue and Giotto, and yeah, it was just really historical and beautiful, and I also loved the essay The Pregnant Madonna, which touched a lot on spirituality, specifically Christianity, and that was really interesting to me as someone who grew up in and around evangelical Christianity, and how... Um, how judgmental people can be towards the belief and inspiration that other people have for their life and there's like a gorgeous passage from that essay that kind of sums up Cusk's relationship with Christianity they experienced in her childhood and how that's kind of fed into her adult life and you can see that it has because it kind of weaves itself in and out of quite a lot of the essays and also there was a bit of like a personal um, connection for me with these essays. Um, so first of all, they travel to France. So they sail from England across to France, stay in France for a couple of nights, and then they drive into Italy. And when they get to Italy, um, they are staying near Barga and they meet a man called Jim who kind of takes them under his wing whilst they're staying there. Now Jim is a Dundonian, he's from Dundee and that is where I'm from. And my family have connections to Barga and they go there pretty much every summer. I, I've never been personally but it was really nice just reading about how these Scottish people are in Italy and how welcoming they are and there's an essay relating to that, I think it's called uh, is it a tennis game or something like that? A game of tennis, maybe? And that essay is more of a character study into the people that uh, Rachel Cusk meets when she's over there. And it had a different feel to a lot of the other essays, and that was quite a memorable one. Um, when I did a little bit of research surrounding the book prior to book club, I did see that allegedly the first print run of this book had to be recalled and pulped because some uh, tourists had recognised themselves in the writing and were really not happy with how they'd been portrayed and were threatening to sue. So that's honestly really surprising to me because every tourist that Cusk writes about in this book um, 
quite a scathing tone that she takes with them, so it must have been something really unpleasant for them to be threatening to sue her. Um, that's just some fun trivia about that book. Um, okay, the last fiction that I read was... Oh, it was my first Ally Smith, and I feel like it's a bit of a crime that I hadn't read Ali any Ally Smith before because she's a very prolific Scottish writer. I don't, I couldn't tell you why I haven't picked up her books before. Like, I really don't have any good reason or excuse, um, but I'm very glad that I finally did. Um, so the book that I read was Hotel World, and I can't say I loved the book, so whilst Hotel World wasn't necessarily the book for me, um, I really did love how obvious and evident Ali Smith's love of language, love of writing, love of books is. Um, you can tell that um, she really cares about the book as like a physical object. Um, just by the way that she writes. So she plays with negative space on the page, in her in this book and I think in a lot of others she doesn't justify her text and that's such an odd and stylistic choice but I really you know like I found that really interesting <laughs> and in other ways in the book she plays with uh, negative space and things and so it really does feel like Smith wants you to you know have her books as physical objects um, the book is divided up into six chapters which are named after tenses, so you have things like present or future conditional, and they each have a different protagonist, but it all revolves around like one. Uh, it all revolves around one location and a few incidents that happen there, kind of over the same. It kind of develops over the same couple of days, and each protagonist is a different woman and. Their stories are vastly different and their voices are so different and I thought that the way that Ali Smith can create so many different voices around the same space because it's all around this one hotel just kind of displays how good she is at writing. Um, the book opens with uh, the ghost of a young woman, I think maybe she's 19 and she's been an employee of uh, Global Hotels and she has sadly fallen to her death in a tragic accident involving a dumb waiter and her ghost is kind of in the liminal space of the in-between before crossing over and hello her ghost is really interested in finding out how long it took her to uh, fall to her death and so she goes and interrogates her corpse. In another chapter, there's a homeless woman who often sits outside the hotel, who's invited into the hotel and for one night. And her voice, she pops up in a couple of different chapters. Her name's Else. And her, the way that Ali Smith conveys her voice is so is so touching and so well done and you can tell that Smith is very interested in giving this homeless woman so much humanity and you know bringing your attention to people who often aren't given attention in real life. Um, there is a hotel receptionist who has a chapter and a journalist who is god awful and uh, the ghost of the young woman who died, her her younger sister also has a chapter. And just how the story interweaves, how all the voices kind of come together, and yeah, I for some reason I didn't love the book, but I loved how it was put together, if that makes sense. Like, it, maybe it wasn't to my taste, but I could appreciate the technicality of it. It definitely made me interested in reading more of Ali Smith's work. Like, I really want to read some more. If you have any suggestions or recommendations, please let me know. I've already had Artful highly recommended to me, and also How to Be Both uh, by Sophie at Biblio Sophie. And... The, the quartet as well. But if you have any favourites, um, 
please let me know downstairs because I do want to dive into her work. Um, yeah. And, oh yeah, I just finished an audiobook. I don't do audiobooks very often, but I listened to All's Well by Mona Awad and loved it. it. It's quite different to what I usually read. I did love, I did read and love Bunny a couple of years ago. And so when I was looking for an audiobook, I kind of wanted to look for something that isn't like the usual book that I would pick up in this kind of felt right. Um, it has a lot of surrealism and magical realism in it. It feels a bit fever dreamy, like Bunny did, but in a very different way. It has that kind of dark humour um, that Mona Ewad is so good at. It follows Miranda Fitch, who is a theatre director at a college, and she's trying to put on a production of Shakespeare's All's Well. But her students are rebelling against her. They want to put on the Scottish play, they want to do Macbeth, and things start to unravel um, maybe a third of the way into the book. Now the first part of the book is very much concerned with the reader knowing Miranda's life and who she is as a person and how that is completely coloured by her experience with chronic pain. So she's an actor who fell off the stage and really, really hurt herself, hurt her hip, her leg and her back. And you kind of get into the monotony of what it's like to take care of yourself with chronic pain, how it interrupts your daily life, how it can, um, you know, how it can tear apart relationships, how you're always fighting to be believed, and I think that that was really well uh, conveyed. Um, and then some twists and turns happen, and the book goes off in a bit of a wild direction, and All's Well is finally put into production, and. Yeah, it's, I want to say it's a ride, it's definitely a, a ride, it's not straightforward, um, a lot of magical realism, a lot of um, twists and turns, dark humour like I said. If you like Shakespeare plays then I would definitely pick it up, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to read it because I actually do really like Shakespearean plays and yeah, I just thought it was an interesting take on a lot of the tropes that you find in these plays. Yeah, so that's what I'm reading at the moment and the last few things that I've read. I'm hoping to pick up O Caledonia very soon because that's the next book for my book club and I'm really, really interested in getting stuck into some Scottish Gothic fiction that seems to just suit my mood right now and definitely Scotland's mood right now. It has been freezing. It was minus 10 the other morning. I'm incredibly sore and stiff today because I was on a shoot last night and we we're filming outside and it was minus 4. Very frosty, very cold, so my muscles and my joints are hurting. Um, but yeah, I kind of love winter, so I'm just enjoying getting to stay indoors and wrapping up and drinking a lot of tea and reading books. Yeah, I'm sorry I haven't really been around. Life got uh, very hard and when life gets hard I definitely just like to fall off the radar and hide under my duvet so that's where I've been. Um, I will do my best to check in again before the end of the year but I have missed you so if you've read anything recently that you think is worth telling me about Maybe that's because you loved it. Maybe it's because you hated it. I w would love to hear that. So drop that in a comment downstairs. And yeah, hopefully I will see you soon.